Have you ever searched for an ancestor's obituary? What did that obituary tell you? Maybe their death date? Maybe the names of their surviving spouse or children? Well, let's dig into that type of record today and see what else we can find. Hey, I'm Melissa Finley. Welcome to Boundless Genealogy, where I teach you how to squeeze every last clue out of the records you find in your family history search so that you can grow your tree with more accuracy and precision. Please subscribe and join me again here for every episode. Obituaries have been printed in newspapers for around 300 years. In the earlier times, they were more like a death notice with just a name and that the person had died. But in more recent times, they have grown to include as much as the family wants to provide, including addresses, uh, life experience, and the surviving members of the family. They can be rich with clues that will help us expand our family tree. It is definitely worth a look to see if one of your ancestors had an obituary printed about them in the newspaper. Today's obituary example comes from a woman named Mrs. Rebecca Thompson of Lena, Illinois, and she died in June of 1938. Her obituary is rich in clues about her her life and her family. In fact, it contains clues that allowed me to finally puzzle together her father's life. He was a tough case to crack. Let's look at all the clues that can be found in her obituary. Her obituary reads, Mrs. Rebecca Thompson passed away at her home Sunday evening. On the last day of May, she suffered a stroke of apoplexy and a severe, and a severe heart attack from which she failed to rally. Frances Rebecca Donahue was born August 17, 1875, in Fredericksburg, Kentucky, where she lived until her marriage to Joseph A. Thompson. After their marriage, Mr. and Mrs. Thompson moved to East Texas, Kentucky, and from there to Durant, Indian Territory, where they resided for a year. Then they returned to Kentucky, remaining there until June 1913, when they moved to Freeport. Several years ago, they came, they came to Lena, where she has since made her home. The obituary goes on to say, Besides her husband, she is survived by two daughters and two sons, Mrs. Joseph Mike Michelle of Freeport, Mac Thompson of DeKalb, Mrs. Chris Dooley, Florence, Wisconsin, and Charles Joseph Thompson of St. Louis. A daughter, Mrs. Fred Stark, passed away in March 1937. Funeral arrangements have not been completed, but services probably will be Wednesday morning. So first of all, where would you find an obituary like this? Thankfully for us, there are many websites now that provide digital copies of old newspapers. I will include a link to many of these websites in the description below, so follow the links there if you'd like to find some resources. Some are paid and there are a lot of free options as well. So what are the clues? There are so many clues we find in this particular obituary. First of all, we have, of course, the place and the date that she died. Now it says that she died Sunday evening. So we'd want to go back and look at the date that this newspaper was published. And it happened to have been published on Monday. So we can go back to the Sunday before that and figure out the date of her death. It also tells us what she died of and that she was ill for a, a month or two before um, she actually did pass away. She had a severe heart attack. Then the next paragraph I think is my favorite one. It gives her maiden name. Her, her name that she was born with was Frances Rebecca Donahue and she was born in August 17, 1875 in Fredericksburg, Kentucky. So even though this obituary uh, and her place of death was in Illinois, it leads us back to Kentucky where she was born. The other great thing about this is that during this time period, Kentucky was really spotty about keeping birth records. There's only a few um, miscellaneous years here and there where the birth records were kept and her year was not one of them. So this gives us her exact birth date and place. It also tells us that she lived in Kentucky until she married her husband and it gives his full name, Joseph A. Thompson. And then I love the next part. It gives a play-by-play -play of the places that they lived and moved to. 
And in this clue was where I figured out her father's puzzling life. So they moved to East Texas, Kentucky, then to Durant Indian Territory, which would be modern day Oklahoma. And um, after they were in Indian Territory for just a year, they moved back to Kentucky. The reason this helped me with her father's research is because I could not figure out why he died in Durant Indian Territory when he had lived the rest of his life in Kentucky. But this tells me right here, he was either visiting his daughter or living with her in the state of Kentucky when he died. Sorry, excuse me, in, this, in the Indian Territory or the modern state of Oklahoma when he died, but his body was returned to Kentucky and interred there at the cemetery. Um, and then it says that they remained in Kentucky until June of 1913 when they moved to Illinois, beginning in Freeport and then moving to Lena later on. The second portion of her obituary tells the information about her children. She had five children, two daughters and two sons still living, and it gives for the daughters their married name and the place where they live. And then for the daughter that passed away, it gives her death date. And so these women, her daughters, are a little bit obscured because it gives them Mrs. and then their husband's name, but it still gives us good clues to go on and find more information about those daughters and their husbands. So what are some things we need to watch out for with these newspaper obituaries? Well, first of all, even though these give us great clues, we don't really know who gave the information for this obituary. It was typically a family member that wrote the obituary or multiple family members worked together on it to submit it to the newspaper. Um, and so the information is really only as good as what they had or what they believed to be true. So just like every other document in family history, we take this information with a grain of salt, knowing that at some point we might find another document which conflicts with this and we have to decide where the truth lies within those conflicting documents. What questions does this obituary give to us? Well, it first asks the question, begs the question, why did they move to so many places? Was it related to her husband's work? What was his occupation? And like I had mentioned before, even though it gives the name of her children, all five of them, the women's identity is a little bit obscured under their husband's identity. So we would want to go and find more records linking them to the husbands whose names are listed and linking them to their parents and finding their own maiden names. So as with every genealogy document, this document also can lead us to other records that we want to uncover for this ancestor. It leads us to things like, can we find any other information about Francis Rebecca Donahue growing up in Fredericksburg, Kentucky. As I mentioned, there will probably not be a birth record, but can we find her in other records with her family? She was born in 1875, so we likely can find her with her family in the 1880 census there in Kentucky. We should be able to find a marriage record for her marriage to Joseph A. Thompson, and it looks like it probably happened there in Kentucky as well which is where they stayed after they were married before they started moving around the country. Um, then we would want to look if we could find them as a married couple in these locations during the other censuses. Of course, the 1890 census is destroyed, but what about 1900 through, through 1930, which is the last census that would have been taken before she passed away. They should be found throughout Kentucky, perhaps in Indian Territory or Oklahoma, and then in Illinois. In fact, those censuses would be another great place to identify the female children in her family. With the children being named, we can also look for their own marriage records, and that would be a great way to tie the husbands that are listed here with the daughters of Rebecca and Joseph getting married to them. And then we can go on to the 1940 census and look for the children that are listed here, as well as to see if Joseph Thompson is still living by the time of the 1940 census. To wrap it up, 
Let's take a look at the clue web that we can form about Mrs. Rebecca Thompson based on this obituary. And I like this clue web. It is a nice rich one to start with. So we know that she was also known as Frances Rebecca Donahue before she was married to her husband. We were given her husband's name that it was Joseph A. Thompson, that she was born in 1875 in Fredericksburg, Kentucky, that she died the 19th of June, 1938, and that she was of Lena, Illinois. We were given to know that she had three daughters and two sons named with the locations that they lived in and or their death dates. And then my favorite part, we were given a whole lot of information about the places that the Thompson family lived over their married life. They lived in East Texas, Kentucky, Durant Indian Territory, back to Kentucky until 1913, and then Freeport and Lena, Illinois. What a great clue-filled obituary that was. Kudos to whoever wrote that and gave us such great family information to lead us on in our family history search. Well, that's it for this episode. Do you have a document you'd like me to take a look at in a future episode? Follow the link in the description below and let me know what your idea is. What was the most interesting thing you found in an obituary? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear. Best wishes in your genealogy research. I'll see you next time. Okay, we're going. Here, where's my say? All right. Oh, wait a minute. Hi, sissy. <laughs> I lift up the computer.